geometry students, Mr. Zazik back better than ever here. We're in unit 12 on volume and des density, our final unit of the year. And uh, in lesson one, we're going to look at cross sections and solids of revolution. So first thing is we're going to talk about a few terms here. The first one is a polyhedron, which is a three-dimensional figure whose surfaces are polygons. Each uh, polygon has a face, as we see in this picture over here. An edge is the segment formed by the intersection of two faces, and a vertex is a point where three or more ed edges intersect. So you see there's a vertex point. We've got three edges. So a, uh, a polyhedron are prisms, and we have what's called like uh, this one here on the left is a rectangular prism. This one here would be a triangular prism. And then we have pyramids and they're defined by their base, like a square pyramid. That's predominantly what we'll work with this year. Um, but you could also have a triangular pyramid. Uh, and then non polyhedrons are a solid figure that has any curved edge or face is not a polyhedron. So a cylinder, cone, a sphere, and then a torus. Torus isn't one. This looks like a donut, kind of. We're not going to talk a lot about that. Um, we won't really deal with that much at all, but the other ones we will in a variety of ways. So the first thing we're going to look at is the cross section. It's the intersection of a solid plane, solid and a plane. It is two-dimensional figure formed by slicing a three-dimensional figure. A three-dimensional solid may be thought as a stack of cross sections, and you can look at this diagram. I want to show you a little video here that's going to help illustrate this um, concept to us in a little more dynamic way. I'll include this uh, link in our um, down in the in the section here. So let's see. What Mass do. shorts. Slicing solid, three-dimensional figures results in different two-dimensional shapes, depending on how you slice them. If you cut through a cylinder with a geometric plane parallel to the cylinder's base, the two-dimensional cross-section is a circle. Any way you slice it, you can get two-dimensional shapes from three-dimensional figures. When you slice a cylinder from top to bottom that is perpendicular to its base, then look at the cross-section straight on. You get a rectangle. What happens when you slice a square pyramid? If you slice across the pyramid with your plane parallel to the pyramid's base, the cross section is a square. If you slice with your plane perpendicular to the pyramid's base, the cross section is a triangle. Remember, you're slicing a solid, three-dimensional figure with a geometric plane. You can slice in any direction. Just keep in mind that shapes can look different when you look at them from different angles. So orient the cross section on the geometric plane. Slicing diagonally can produce different shapes such as an ellipse or a trapezoid. Understanding the two-dimensional shapes that result from slicing solid, three-dimensional figures is important for geometry and ninjas. Alrighty, so we see what we have going on here, and here are some different cross sections that you can see for a rectangular prism, a square pyramid, a circular cylinder, a circular cone, a sphere. Obviously, it's only a circle. That's the only thing we can form. All right, so that's kind of idea number one. Those are cross sections. We're going to do a bunch of examples of those in a little bit. But the second is the solid of revolution. And a solid is a three-dimensional figure obtained by rotating two-dimensional figures around the axis. And so you see here we have some pictures of when you rotate a rectangle around, that forms a cylinder, a triangle here, this forms a cone, um, a circle or a semicircle can create a sphere. The torus is when um, the circle doesn't touch this axis of rotation. And then here we have this rectangle around this axis creates a hollow cylinder. And then this one creates a hollow sphere um, in this bottom right one. So I got another quick little video that I want to show you um, that shows this again in a little more dynamic way. And again, I will put the link um, to this in the comment or in the description section here. How do you predict the three-dimensional results of rotating a two-dimensional figure? For example, 
what 3D shape would result from rotating this rectangle? In this lesson, you will learn how to predict the three-dimensional results of rotating simple figures by analyzing the effects of rotations. Before we begin, let's review two concepts. First, a rotation is a circular movement of an object around a center of rotation. Second, in three-dimensional space, objects rotate around an imaginary line, called an axis of rotation. For this lesson, we're going to rotate two-dimensional figures around an axis of rotation and examine what three-dimensional figures result. Hopefully, we'll notice some patterns that will help us predict other rotations. Let's start with a simple figure, a triangle. If we rotate this in two dimensions, it would move like this. But in three dimensions, we're going to rotate it around an axis. Here's our axis, bisecting the figure. Now let's watch what happens as it rotates. Now it's interesting to see that the edge that was perpendicular to the axis drew a flat surface as it rotated. And the other two edges, as they rotated, created a curved surface. So, the rotation of a triangle creates a cone if the axis of rotation bisects through a vertex. If we place the axis along the edge of the triangle, watch what results. The edge that overlaps the axis provides the top and bottom extremes of this solid, and is the axis of the shape. At the same time, as the other two edges rotate, they create curved surfaces, pointing away from the axis. Let's try this with a rectangle. Watch this rectangle rotate and pay attention to what surfaces are created. Do you notice what's happening? The edges that were perpendicular to the axis of rotation rotated, drawing out flat surfaces. The edges that were parallel to the axis drew curved surfaces. This rotation created a cylinder. So, what do you think will happen if we orient the axis a different direction? Here's that same rectangle with a different axis of rotation. When we rotate around this axis, notice what happens. Again, the edges that are parallel to the axis create a curved surface, and the edges perpendicular to the axis create flat surfaces. A cylinder is the result again. So, does that mean that every time we rotate a rectangle, we'll create a cylinder? Well, let's find out. What happens if the axis of rotation is oriented diagonally across the figure? Before rotating this rectangle, let's try to predict the result. None of these edges are perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So, as it rotates around the axis, we won't get any flat surfaces like we did before. Everything will be curved surfaces that angle away from the axis. Let's watch. Was this what you predicted? What is really interesting about this rotation is that some of the edges overlapped with others, but we're only observing the outer faces. So, what about rotating a circle? Now, clearly, this is not an actual circle, but stretch your imagination with me. Let's think about how this would rotate. If this were a circle, there would only be a curved edge, right? In fact, rotating this will create curved surfaces, and it'll be a sphere. Of course, placing the axis of rotation tangent to the circle's edge will result in a different figure. In this lesson, you have learned how to predict the three-dimensional results of rotating simple figures by analyzing the effects of rotations. Alrighty, so I will, uh, I'll put those in our uh, notes, but that helps you kind of see those two things. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, try to do a bunch of examples here. I'm going to do my best to, uh, to draw these. So it says, describe each cross section formed by the plane and the solid. So do you see what's happening, whoops, here? We've got this plane, what would that be? That would be a rectangle that would be formed through here. How about when we slice this cylinder in this direction, what would be formed? Here's how I try to think about it. That, there we go, we got another rectangle through that slice. Uh, what about this one? Well, here it is, draw it out. What's happening here? That's another rectangle. So we've got a lot of rectangles that are being sliced. How about this cylinder when we 
slice it down perpendicular as we come across. What do we have here? That's a rectangle. Um, how about this one? Different type of uh, polyhedron. That might be a square. It's hard to it's hard to tell. I'd have to have some more specific information. I'm going to call that a rectangle. This one to me appears to be a square in this case. That looks like a cube, so I'm going to call that one a square. Um, so we have a parallel to the base. This one also appears to be a square to me when we draw that here. Now in this one, now we're, now we're getting a little bit of a different shape. What do we have there? That's a triangle. And how about this one? Cylinder. When we slice through that cylinder, we get a rectangle. Okay. So now we're going to try some more of those. Sketch and state the figure that is the, uh, the cross-section described for the given figure and the stated plane. So a horizontal plane. A horizontal plane is going to be a plane that uh, slices kind of this way across. This is the horizontal. So what's going to happen here? Well, this is going to be what looks to me like an ellipse. So when you have it here, it's not quite a circle, but going down here. So if we take that same shape and now we do a vertical plane, the vertical plane is going to come through here. What's that going to form? Well, that's actually going to form a, this is kind of what, the, what it'll look like, down, come across, up. Not the greatest picture, but that would be a trapezoid. Again, it's hard. sometimes it's hard to visualize these. This one comes in, that goes out. The two bases are parallel to each other. Um, a horizontal plane intersecting. Now, here we know it's a cube. So what's going to happen? This is going to cut across. A cube is like a bunch of squares stacked on top of each other. And so the vertical plane would be the same thing. That would also be a square in this case. The diagonal plane intersecting the top, front, and right faces of the cube. So top, front, and right um, here. Top, front, and right, a diagonal plane. So if we had something like this cutting across here, that could be a, depending on, depending on how it was sliced through, this could be a triangle that you have uh, with this slice. So a horizontal plane, a circular cone, when it gets through the cone here, that would be a circle that's cutting across this. A vertical plane intersecting a circular cone through its vertex. My pen is not calibrated quite right, but so my drawings are a little off, but that creates a triangle. A horizontal plane intersecting a square pyramid. If the base is square, these are all going to be square as long as it's parallel to the, uh, to the base. A vertical plane intersecting a square pyramid at its vertex, this would be a triangle. A plane intersecting the right face, the front face, and the bottom face of the square pyramid. So right, front, and bottom be something like cutting through here, down to here, and then across. That would likely be a uh, trapezoid. Those are hard, that, those ones are hard to, a little bit hard to visualize. Um, a plane parallel to the bases of the circular cylinder. So parallel, well, that would be a circle. A vertical plane, however, that's going to cut like this. That would be a rectangle. Okay. Now, when you get into a sphere, these are always going to be circles. So any plane intersecting a sphere is going to be a circle. Now, another kind of way of asking that type of question is, which of the following is not a cross section of a right circular cone? Um, I think that would be number one is not a cross section. And then which of the following for a pyramid? 
it's not there's no circle that's a cross section of that um, which of the following may have the same cross section as a sphere a sphere always has a circle so that would be the cylinder where we would also have a circle which may have a trapezoid as a cross section and we just did that one uh, over here when you are cutting down like this you get that trapezoid effect okay so that's the cross section now we're going to describe the solid produced by revolving each region around so when we spin this one what would happen here is this would create a cone okay B, that semicircle, would, if we spin that, it'll create a sphere. Uh, the rectangle spun creates a uh, cylinder. Um, so E, this would be cone, rectangle, cylinder. Uh, for D, it's kind of hard to like uh, describe what that is. It's like a cone on top of a like this would come around and create a cylinder but then the top part would be a cone so let's call this like a cylinder plus cone i don't know how to describe that uh, better than that a g see how the because the triangle piece that's like the cone part that top piece when you spin that but this rectangle here the square that would spin for the cylinder. Okay, for G, this is going to be a sphere. For H, now we have a space in there, so when you spin that around, that's what we call a, a hollow sphere, meaning there would be emptiness on the inside. I, when you take that ball around, that's where you're going to have a torus. Okay, that's going to look like a donut. And uh, this here, when you got that space, this would be a hollow cylinder okay and again um, your as you're looking at this will uh, there's some things that you can I'll see if I can post the link and find it there's a there's an app that allows you to like slice all the cross sections and do the rotations it's a little applet program and uh, I'll see if I can find that and put that in the, uh, the comment section and you can go look on that. So I'll put the, the two video links in there as well um, if you want to watch those uh, in a little different format. All right, so there's lesson one. We'll start getting into the volume and surface area in the next one, but we needed to start off by uh, looking at these cross sections and these rotations. Okay, let's keep going. See you soon.